Before we look at sort of a more exciting shellcode example, I think it would be helpful to run this um, trivial example we have here in GDB. So rather than pipe our exploit string into the actual example program, I'm going to put it into a file called exploit.dat, and then we're gonna run um, example one dot out inside GDB. Okay. So we're gonna set a breakpoint at the get message function. Okay. Then we're gonna run the program reading exploit.dat as an input file. Okay, now this won't work initially because you'll recall our program needed the address of the um, overflown buffer to be able to jump into the stack and execute code. However, when we're running a program inside of a debugger, the address of the buffer is gonna be offset a little bit because of some extra stuff that the debugging program does to the stack. So what we can do at this point is um, print the address of the buffer. Notice here it's different than what we had before. So the address is D0BA. So I'm just going to exit out of GDB for a second, update the exploit code to be D0BA, write that into exploit.dat, go back into GDB. Okay, now we can break on get message and then run with exploit.dat as our input, okay? So we've uh, paused execution sort of here inside get message. We're prompting the user to enter a message. I'm just gonna step through this a little bit until after we've read the string. So here's the call to get string. We're gonna read that. We can examine the contents of the stack to see that we've read in um, our exploit string. So we have the knob slide right here. Um, we have the address that we're hoping to return to, which should actually be the address of you know, one of the first few bytes in our knob sled. Okay, so if we can continue stepping through the program, um, we're gonna watch these lines right here as we're stepping. So here's where we echo the string back to the user. We're gonna keep calling that. We printed out the address of the buffer. Now here we're at leave, return, and at this point we should see ourselves return into our shell code. So if we, I step once more, you'll notice the instruction we're sitting at now is one of the no-ops that was entered into our shellcode. Uh, the instruction pointer is pointing at the first byte of the buffer. We can prove that that's still there. Oh, uh, no, because we've over in the reference. We're in a different um, stack frame now. That's fine. Um, so we can see here that the instruction pointer is pointing at the first, uh, the address of that buffer that we inserted, um, and that's this instruction right here. So we're just gonna sort of slide down the no op slide. All right, um, you can see the counter is going up as we continue to process no ops. Eventually, it was here, we're gonna land in our shellcode. All right, so we see us XORing out EAX to set the value zero in there. Then we move the value one into AL which is the lower half of EAX. Then we're gonna zero out BX right here. Okay, so now BX is zero. So we have system call number one with a parameter of zero. Now we're gonna call int 80, which is effectively a system call. At that point, our debug process terminates and it says exited normally. That's it. That was uh, us jumping into the shellcode, traversing down the knob slide and exiting. So now we're gonna have a look at a more exciting example of shellcode. I was saying that we might want to write some more exciting sh shell code or something a, a little bit more interesting rather than just exiting from a program. So for example, I've gone ahead and increased the size of the buffer in example number one, and I've put in some more shell code here. Um, like there's a um, the address jump over here, there's some no ops here, there's some no ops here, and the body of some shell code in here. Um, for example, you might want to print a message to the screen. So you could use the write system call uh, you're going to have to figure out some of the more challenging components of that because, for example, to call the right system call, you are going to need to pass it as the second parameter, the address of a string that you want to print. Right? So you're going to have to figure out how to build um, a string inside your shellcode. There's a couple of ways to do it, uh, whether, like jumping around within the code and creating references to locations in memory or pushing characters onto the stack and then figuring out where they are in the stack. But ultimately what you want is to be able to run your shell code and have something like this happen, where we've injected a message or a string and we ended up printing out that string. 